Lust is generally considered a sexual sin. Why did you go with a buffalo skull? I think people understand lust these days as being something related to sex, but that that's because it's accessible. Sex is accessible. But this series of paintings investigating the seven deadly sins is meant to look at both contemporary and traditional interpretations. I think we have lust for a lot of things other than sex, but we minimize that. Television is a perfect example of where you can find people happily proclaiming that driving around looking at houses is their porn, real estate porn, or there's food porn, for example. We lust after so many things these days, it's commonplace. And there aren't too many people who will think that something so commonplace as describing food or decorating will say it's a deadly sin. But if we look at the history of lust in North America, we can see a real lust for land, for ownership and control of land. And it has been the buffalo that has paid a huge price for our land lust. We all know that there was once massive herds of buffalo and they were hunted almost to nothingness. Their bodies would lie rotting in the sun simply because it was so easy to kill them. They became devalued. We would load up boxcars full of buffalo skulls just for the bounty. But after a while, the skulls, the entire carcass was just left by the side of the railway tracks. We didn't kill them for food or money or skins, but for the lust of the kill, the lust of the land. The buffalo skull in the lost painting is missing its lower jaw. Why? There's a lot about the sin of lust that goes unspoken. We were saying earlier that lust is considered sexual, and then we talked about food lust and house lust and so on. I think lust is so pervasive that its presence goes mainly unspoken. So what's wrong with food lust or house lust? Where's the sin? Lust isn't about desire, it's about the uncontrollability of that desire. In the painting you see the skull is placed within both the land and the sky. If the land represents the human plane, you see that it's rising up, engulfing and growing. It's no longer separate from the skull. We humans are not separate from lust, from that desire, that uncontrollability of desire. We embrace it like there's nothing wrong, and it's filling up the space that belongs to the sky, the spiritual realm. That's why there's storm, there are storm clouds? Right. There is a gap in the storm clouds, a symbol of hope and clearing, but the swirling clouds are echoed in the swirling flow of the bone of the skull. On an important level, it's merging together, slowly becoming indistinguishable. Physicality, lust, and spirituality are blending. It isn't cohesive. It isn't a union. It's the human inability to keep separate what needs to be kept separate. In this case, for the case of lust in particular, it's so pervasive that we're losing sight of the real damage being done, the loss. There's silence here. Part of the story is missing, like the lower jawbone. And you, the viewer, are the one to tell the story.